stories and myths about violets have been part of human history for millennia. Here are a few examples. Athens, once known as the center of Greek culture, was called the Violet Crowned City. Thousands of years later, Austin, Texas, adapted the same name for itself. Saint Valentine was a Christian, imprisoned by a Roman emperor and sentenced to die on February 14th. According to legend, he made ink from violets to correspond with friends. On the day of his execution, he wrote a letter to a loved one. He signed it from Yaw Valentine, a phrase still used today on greeting cards. After Napoleon's exile to Elba, he vowed to return to France when violets bloomed. His followers wore them to show their support. Between the late 1800s and mid-1900s, Rhinebeck, New York, was the center of a thriving violet industry. Customers from all over the world purchased these flowers to give loved ones on Valentine's Day. It wasn't until the 1930s that roses replaced violets as the symbol of the holiday. A short trailer on YouTube from Toby Carey's film Sweet Violets describes in more detail about the rise and fall of violet production. There are other violet connections to people, so those interested in history might enjoy doing more research about these. Violet leaves and flowers are used for culinary purposes, but not their roots. These dainty perennial plants leaf out in March, flower in late April, and die back once the weather warms up. To avoid any confusion, African violets sold by florists are not relatives and are not edible. Violet leaves are heart-shaped, and perhaps another reason why the plant became associated with love. Eating just two leaves satisfies the minimum daily requirement for vitamins A and C. Use them sparingly because they have a small amount of salicylic acid. Moderation is key. Don't make a salad of only their leaves. Since they're somewhat mucilaginous, I add a few to soups as a thickener. Be sure of their identification as the bitter, smooth-edged leaves of the invasive plant Lesicelindine resemble the scalloped-edged ones of violets. The backs of lesser celandine leaves on the left are somewhat smooth. Those of violets on the right have raised veins. If still in doubt, wait until flowers appear. Lesser celandine's flowers are yellow, resemble buttercups, and bloom earlier than violets, whose flowers are usually shades of purple and white. The flowers are beautiful and worthy of attention. Although they're called violets, there are over a hundred species, and their colors range from pale violet, dark purple, white, and sometimes yellow. The plant has two kinds of flowers. The sterile and showier edible ones appear in the spring. The inconspicuous fertile ones appear in the fall. There's no reason to feel guilty about picking the flowers. The more you pick, the more they'll bloom. Violet flowers have many uses. Do not pick them from places sprayed with herbicides. Gathering takes time, but I don't mind because it's truly a meditative process. You may notice there's some green on the bottom of these blossoms. What I usually do is pluck off the petals, like this, which is time consuming. I prefer to have just the petals. I'll often add a few of these to salads. Some creative cooks make candied violets as a garnish. It's too much trouble for me. There are recipes on the internet on how to do this. I've made jelly from the flowers, but because sometimes it gels and sometimes it doesn't, I don't want to post a recipe here that may not work. More often than not, I end up with a violet syrup which gets added to smoothies. Scientifically inclined children might enjoy an easy way to determine if a liquid is acetic or basic. 
Violet flowers indicate the pH of a substance by changing color. First, make a flower tea. Pour hot water over the violets, cover, and let steep until the water turns color. Strain out the flowers and separate the tea into two cups. When an acid, such as orange or lemon juice, is added to one of the cups, the liquid turns pinkish. If an alkali, such as baking soda, is added to the other cup, the liquid turns greenish. Here, the two transformed juices are above the original violet juice below. Then, I put the original purple violet juice, as well as the acetic pinkish one, in ice cube trays. I didn't use the greenish alkaline juice. Once frozen, I'll use these cubes to perk up iced tea or an alcoholic beverage. Another way to use violets is to make flower ice cubes. Fill the compartments of an ice cube tray halfway with water and gently place a fresh flower in the middle of each section. Partially freeze, then cover with water to the top and refreeze. Add these flower cubes to various drinks. Now that you've seen ways to utilize these flowers, Perhaps you'll come up with even better ideas.